Hey guys, so today is our first kind of podcast type field of things. We're just going to have a bit of a chat um, for people within the industry of what we believe would be maybe a reason as to why people self-sabotage, say that they want to hit a goal, go towards it, even make good progress, but then at some point end up back at the beginning or even worse before that. So um, we've got Kelly, Jacob, Robbie and myself, all within the fitness industry that see this every single day. So hopefully it's giving you an insight into uh, our thoughts, honestly and just between us. No one's watching. <laughs> okay, let's start. Jacob, see you right in front. Yeah. What so, do you think? Well, I mean, people always yo-yo, like we all see it, know it, probably done it a little bit ourselves at times, like you get really fit, then you get a little bit unfit, a little really fit, unfit and so on. But mm. I guess the um, the range that that happens is different for everyone. Some people go to extremes, some people don't. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, it's a whole bunch of facts. Like it's not just one simple answer. Like it's always multifaceted. So if we talk like you know, there's gonna be a psychological component, there'll be a physical component, there's you know stress there's er everything so um, which one to attack first I guess if we talk about something like the psychological side of things mm. um, first off so people I know straight away if we talk about our challenges that we do here six week challenges so people come in and s almost off the bat you can tell whether they're gonna do good or not Absolutely. based on the way they talk about it the way they're holding themselves whether they're <laughs> like, all, like, all, all that you know like the, way, where the way they describe what they're going to do or whether they're you can tell straight away whether they're going to commit sort of thing yeah you know? like whether they're really buying into it or if it's just like oh yeah yeah i'll do this like it's the quick fix that has, those people who come in it's like that when it gets hard a couple weeks in yeah. a week into it even then they're like no nah, because that's, that's the problem isn't it is that it's not a gift that can be got or no, bought you can't just there's hard work that like goes that, into no. it and from my side i always think that it's like a value system right um if uh, I've used this one before, if we all said, well, we're different, but if we said like, right, let's sprint down to the wharf and back right now, most people are like, ah, oh, I'm not doing that, I didn't come to do that. But if you pulled out a check of $20 million and you knew it was genuine, they'd do it in a second. The run's still the same, but the value they put on the run changed. So I think it's sort of, depending on what value system they've got, with it is uh, what what kind of result they're going to get from it because if it's not high in the values then why the hell would you do it? You know? And that's where you have your extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. Exactly. Yeah. Keep going. I'm just going to check this. Yeah. Saying something. Um, and you know, if you've got something like a monetary value at the end, more people want to want to do it because they're in it for the money. And you find that as soon as the challenge would stop, that's where they get off yeah. the band bandwagon because they, you know, it's it's not something that they hold hold dear to them. Yeah, Whereas like absolutely. we talk about, we we find I I think a lot of. Uh, like mums that come in end up doing well work because they, you know, they want to be able to play with their kids and make sure they can go down to the park and lift them up and you know they can find if if they're getting overweight or they they've got a bad knee and they can't do that anymore. Um, they they can start to see that they're missing out on their, their kids' childhood. Um, yeah, and I think that's probably like a big motivating issue. Those those people end up doing better than mm -hmm. if we were to ever go here's a you know five thousand dollar prize for whoever yeah. loses you know the same amount of weight. Absolutely. I think because they're looking at like the positives about it then as well like they've got this kid but they want to you know make themselves better for their kid but when it's all negative stuff like when you're talking about your negatives and stuff you're not going to be so motivated like when you're when say you come in for a challenge you can tell straight away if they're like being positive and they come in we're gonna smash this but they're like if they come in they're like oh yeah today I didn't do too well or whatever like make yourself like mm -hmm. feel better like to get that motivation, so and then mind, that's how you're... Like your mindset, basically. Yeah, your mindset, yeah, that's yeah. it. It also, I suppose, comes into your peer group as well, what's important, you know, like, um, if someone was one of our friends, close friends, right, I really want to do this challenge, and they started to eat something, you'd be like, man, what are you doing? Yeah. You're meant to be on a yeah. challenge. Like, are you going to hit your goal like that? No, it's not acceptable in this group. Mm -hmm. So we hold each other accountable. But in most groups, um, if they start eating differently, it's, oh, live a little, come on, do this. It's because they're elevating their standard of what they're accepting. So they have that two choices of do I elevate and go with them or funnily enough, sabotage them. They're not even doing it vindictively. It's usually out of love. It's that if they're going, they're afraid of loss or losing or, you know, so it's like, oh, come on, live a little because they want your time. So ironically, it's doing it out of love, but it's actually complete sabotization towards your particular goal, you know? And absolutely, and I think to reiterate sort of like the intrinsic extrinsic, like obviously, yeah, as soon as you're, you're motivated by something that's a, like, I guess like an objective, like, oh yeah, once I get there, it's done. Mm. Like, uh, end prize or, 
you know, uh, like we say, we try not to put an end date on the six week challenge. Like if, if they've got that, sometimes they'll do really well temporarily. Yeah. It's yeah. not a, a change that's going to be long term. The intrinsic side of things is usually where it becomes more of a, at least longer term mm. um, change because usually even if they hit their goal, they're like, I want, I don't want to go back to that because there's a lot of pain associated yeah. with it. And so that's where they'll Sometimes go. they've got to self-sabotage to find that pain. Yeah. I've seen people that hit their goal, yeah. I feel amazing, completely go back, go, this is terrible, why did I do that? And then the second time they hit it. So I think it's the realization that if you fall off the wagon, um, you know, people like one day turns into two, turns into a week, turns into a year, but unless you just jump back on it, you can get there relatively quick, especially if you're working with professionals who know what they're doing. Um, we all know, I mean, myself and Jacob, put on a ton of weight purposely recently, a little shamefully amount, like, um, but what do we lose? Like 11 kilos in two weeks, just because we know what we're doing. And it's just a matter of taking the action. So if you don't know what you're doing, seek the advice of someone that does, but then it's the action. Because we've obviously met people that have come in with no idea and have just followed and got, in, what was it 23.7 kilos? Was yeah, like yeah. the highest, yeah. you know? Yeah. 23.7 kilos in six weeks. So Fly wants to get on there as well. I know, I was like, ha, it's attacking her. <laughs> um, but like, um, then we have other people come in and do nothing. Is it the systems? Is it what they're doing that's wrong? No, because we, we proved it hundreds of times now. It's the application of those systems. And that becomes down to the whole human condition, the psychology of why does someone take action when another doesn't, you know? And it is, I think you hit the nail on the head with the emotional part. Um, another thing I've said before in the seminars is, if you turn up at a house and it's on fire and you realize you left your, your pound water bill on the, on the table, there's no action. There's no emotion there. You're like, excellent, got myself a few weeks there. <laughs> you know? But if you realize the person you love the most in the world is in bed asleep and it's on fire, now you risk your own life because of the emotional drive. So I think if it's just like, oh, I want to look better for the summer, it's not really going to do anything. But if it was, you know, like some deep sea that's doing it for your child, mm. Or like I'm just absolute sick rock bottom. I'm not taking this anymore. I hate everything about them. They're the people that do the best. The, the lukewarm ones are the ones. That, yeah, that's it. You know? and it's it's like the uh, taking it back to, I guess, fear is such a strong driver. And unfortunately, it's like well, it's usually those who are driven by fear do really well. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like well, one, why did we get there in the first place? And it's because humans as creatures, we're we're definitely. Uh, reactive not yeah. you know proactive we, we always rather than preventing something we get to a point where we then have to react to a situation like um you know someone getting a heart attack or yeah. having a either having a heart attack or a heart scare or something along those lines the whole and dog then, analogy yeah, yeah. The that's right dog. Do you remember that one? straight yeah. away they lose all the way and you know why they could have lost it straight away they could have lost it at any stage but they didn't have the drive because they weren't scared enough they have that they're scared of dying now no sweet that's enough drive for me they do it straight away and they never put it back on yeah, and, you know, unfortunately, that's what it takes sometimes. But it's like that's what we were trying to avoid, right? Like, there's um, uh, I don't think you'd have heard it. Like, I say it in seminars and stuff. Is you see, uh, see a dog lying on a hot floor, and you say to the owner, "Why is the dog whimpering?" Because the floor's hot. Why doesn't he move? Because it's not hot enough. And that's just people, yeah. right? You know, lie there and whimper because the the, the floor is uncomfortable. But one or two things have to happen. The, either a big old shiny bone to get the dog to get up and move, but that isn't always motivational because the dog doesn't want to get up and move. You know, like it has to be a big shiny bone for that to happen. Um, usually the floor gets too hot. And a good example is just what Jacob said there is that someone really should lose weight and they don't. Suddenly they have a heart scare, bang, they lose all the weight. Could they have lost it before? Yes, but the floor wasn't hot enough. Yeah. So it's those two things. You kind of need the, the pull of where, where you want to get. But if that floor's not hot enough, it's got to be a big pull, like the $20 million. But that doesn't come up every day. No one's going to come up, oh, run with me, I'll give you $20 million. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to go, you know, do you want to come for a run with me? Now you need pain enough to make you go, you know? I think another thing is... And the, running's not the best way of doing it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I think Bad another thing is the fact of, um, like if we're staying, I guess, with that, like, you've got fear, you've got all these different things, but then there's so many physical aspects that you have to sort of at least get half in order, you know, like stress, you mm. know, sleep, like all these things that are factors to that are going to contribute yeah. to it. So not only do you need that right mindset psychologically, um, be ready for the, the, I guess, the hard times and future casting. I think that's a big thing, you know, future casting, where am I going to be? Because that's going to make the hard times that you're experiencing easier because you know why you're doing it. Yeah. If you're really like about living in the moment or you're really like, uh, just right now, I really want that cupcake, whatever it is, you know, I yeah. really want that right now. 
yes, you may, but if you think about where you're going to be in six weeks' time, eight weeks' time, a year time, you keep going back to that, you'll be like, it's not worth it because I'm going to, that's going to be an awesome feeling when I get to that, like yeah. that future casting ability, which a lot and of people I wonder if a lot of people, what they do is they, because they're not doing, say, the right strategy, because I suppose there's a strategy element of it, right? You put all your effort and all your hopes and dreams into the wrong strategy, you get the wrong result. So maybe if you, like, for example, people try to out, out train a bad diet, right? They think, oh, I'll go for walks more. So they walk further and further and further or cycle further, but you can't out train the bad diet. You know, it's one Tim Tam's 80 calories. You know, that's eight minutes of burpees if you want to do that. You're not going to outrun it. So maybe that's um, an element of, right, I'm going to try so hard. And they try it for like four or five weeks and burn out because they're working out so much and nothing's happening. And they just change that wrong element. I mean, like spinning it a little bit because um, relatively recently you went from sort of like, Train. We didn't train at all, did you? you, just, did you well, dancing's yeah, obviously training. Yeah, like I used to not train at all. Like I never went to the gym until I came here. And then like yeah. you've gone from gym to athlete. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Try to. So, so for you, because like you're a good example, because when you came in, I remember speaking to you and, and, and you were listening, you're really intent. You and Liz were just like, we want to take it to that next level, which I hear all the time. But then when I actually said, right, you need to do this, this and this, you did inconsistently yeah, and got the result. So for you, what was your thought uh, what was your mindset and what were you focusing on? Because it, you weren't overweight, you weren't massively in need of people would have gone, oh, she's fit already, she doesn't yeah. need to do it. I definitely what was, was not fit at all, like at all. Like I was, like all I was doing was dancing, but even at that, since coming to the gym and coming to Evolve, my dancing's got so much better, like because I've strengthened up and like my diet's got so, like, so much better. And like, it's not like I ate bad before, but like, Compared to what I, how I eat now, I'm much more aware of like what I'm eating, my calories throughout the day and whatnot. So yeah, um, yeah, it's completely changed it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So what what do you reckon your focus was? What what was it that made you go right? I'm going to knuckle down to this, or is it just your personality? I think it part like part of it would definitely be my personality, but also having Liz, like having a gym buddy yeah, so as well. Yeah, just, social support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's back to that, that friendship group. You know what I mean? If you're yeah. around smokers, yeah. you're probably going to smoke. If you're not around smokers, mm. you know, to the extreme version of smoking. But yeah, you've got Liz, who's also comes all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. You train all. And it all. helped because like it was kind of like oh. She, like I better go because she's mm. going to be there and then she knows like, the same yeah, absolutely. but like then coming I remember the first time I came I came with a friend and I was so nervous and then she didn't message me back one day so I didn't know if she was coming yeah. and I was like oh my god you know what? I'm just going to go I'm just going to go by myself and I went and I was like that was fine yeah. and here like, you, you are know, now on the trainer out. side yeah, of things yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the right side yeah, and that's, that, it. that's such it on the right side yeah. <laughs> that's such a good point yeah there as well because even for me like I'll train no matter what but Training when we train as a team is so much more motivating. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and you will give more, even when you think you give a lot on your own. Sometimes I do have sessions where I really pushed it, but then you're training next to someone else. Like, yeah. for everyone, I think unanimous is better. I, think, I think it's anyone who's who has regularly done gym at some stage will know that when they've got a gym partner, it either drags you there if you don't want to be there, or you're motivated to go more so. In even if you're already keen to train. You're like, actually, like, let's go, like, because you've got someone there to yeah. even just have like a bit of banter with, you know, like while you're while you're training, or push each other, spot each other, like it just makes it a better a vibe. And yeah. then on the other side of things, if you haven't been to the gym going initially, like it's it's good to go together. You feel a lot more secure. You feel a lot more safe going with someone, experiencing it together, like early on. So you know, like it's yeah. it's a good idea if you if you haven't been or you're wanting to go or just starting out, grab a friend, bring them along, like and be like. Let's, let's do it together. Like, absolutely. You know. so, then you're motivating each other yeah, as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And so like on that point, that's obviously probably one of the tips you can do if you, if you have got off the bandwagon and you had that self-sabotage type thing, is yeah, enlisting social support, grabbing a friend, mm -hmm. bringing them along. Absolutely. I think one of the other probably key ones that I find is like clients coming on is having some sort of like performance related goal. Like you start to compare yeah. yourself yeah. and your body image to someone else you've seen on a magazine or something like that. You know, that's not you on the magazines. You're never going to look like that. You know, yeah. genetics play a huge part, as we know, yeah. in the different you know shapes and sizes of muscles and Absolutely. A, a lot of those people. You know, kind of freaks that are 
you see on Instagram and stuff like that, yeah. um, they're probably not realistic goals to like set for yourself. And so I reckon performance related goals, like can I do a pull up by the end of it? Or can I get an extra push up after six weeks? And I think that, that helps people stay mm -hmm. on the bandwagon when mm -hmm. they've got those goals and they're doing those goal settings. Um, I find when people get in limbo, when they don't have goals and they don't know what they're striving for, yeah. they fall off that, that bandwagon. So maybe if we talk about some tips about how you know people could get back back on the, into their, their gym routine, like what are some of the things that we, yeah. we do or look at that make sure we, we're consistent for a long period of time. Uh, just on that point, before we do that, like I think you're spot on there with the whole Instagram thing, because um, we all know like when you're taking a photo of your abs and what have you, there's a certain angle. Yeah, so like If you look Damn. at exactly <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. there will always be, they'll do it in down lighting, they'll be yeah. slightly on to make the waist small. Like even the people on Instagram. Yeah. Um, I, I was speaking to a guy recently who knows quite a lot of these people. And I was like, oh yeah, you go to this. And he goes, the first thing you realize is that they don't look like you think they yeah. are. You know, they're big. No, yeah, no, they're, they're, it's because you know they bring the cl camera closer. They're yeah. slightly side on. You know, like sometimes yeah. I made a video and go, "Wow, that's alright." <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, like, um, and so not only the majority of them, like, if, if you think of it, back in the day, I remember when if you saw a bodybuilder when I was like 14, first went to the gym, it was like, "Wow, that guy's a freak." Yeah. Like, look at the size of it, and you were sort of mesmerized by it. Now everyone's done a show, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So, um, but so like the, the industry's changed a little bit, but um, the one percenters would really stand out. The problem is now is there's so many millions of people, billions connected via social media, that those one percenters still stand out, but the problem is they're the famous accounts that everyone follows. So now the people you are scrolling through are one percenters, and then people start, start um, comparing their body, body shape to someone who's genetically advantaged, um, who's probably hit the right information, done the right thing, and then they're using lighting uh, positions, and they're also um, editing it as well these days. I mean, you can get an app that edits in real time. So th there's no way you can compare yourself to these people because the ones you're comparing to are the freaks. It's literally like saying, do you reckon you could run as fast as Usain Bolt? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, to put it into equivalent. <laughs> yeah, 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 Give me a car. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what it's like, you know what I mean? You just go, they're genetically gifted, they've happened to pick a sport that they're, you know, more likely going to do well at, and yeah. they've trained their ass off, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. But those, all those things have come together, and of course, Usain Bolt, comes up to the, and he's the top, everyone knows who he is. And yeah. it's like, that's the same in that bodybuilding physique. 100%. And, like and, everyone's, and the thing is, is that everyone has their unique um, yeah. turn on it. So if you say, if you, you, you see someone, you've got those tiny little hips and the white shirt, you go, I want to be like that, but you've got wide hips. Not going to happen. But maybe you can find a body comparison that's close to yours or realize that wider hits probably gives you a better center of match. You might be better at some kind of grappling sport. Mm. All the guys I've ever grappled with that are great, they've got big, wide, solid hips. They're like doors to try and move. The guys that are more aesthetic are easy to tip over, you know? So like, um, yeah. I think like on that, it's just people understanding that there's more going on behind the scenes. Don't compare yeah. yourself because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes yeah. to make them look like that for one shot or one whatever. Like, yeah. um, there was a thing on, uh, I think it was Chris Hemsworth or one of those, like where uh, on the, the scene of Thor or something, yeah, where yeah. like in between sets, he's uh, in between like you know takes, he's doing curls and everything for the scene. Yeah, like you know, like so he's, he's like he's literally yeah, like yeah. already a big guy, obviously he's genetically gifted, everything like that. But then is also like constantly on, got a pump on from doing weights in between takes, and then people see like just the you know, the takes all put together for the, the movie and they go, yeah. oh, wow, look at him, like, he's a, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. like, he's a genetic freak, like, oh, I wish I could look like that, but you don't realize, like, that's not only just, that's not just him like that, he's doing all this stuff in between 100%. takes with all the lighting, with yeah. all the editing. right angles, editing, everything like that, all together to make that. And he's dieted for that scene. That's yeah. right, like, they're in well. peak performance for that movie, they don't look like that all the time. No. Like, no. They've literally done all the lead up for that film, have their off season or whatever you want to call it, you know, like the yeah. period where they're not doing movies and they don't look like that in that time. No. They're enjoying themselves, going, having some food, having some, you know, like. But even like, like, to, like most people in the say fitness industry will keep a body fat percentage where your abs are visible, right? But like, even right now, right now they go, we've got a next week and the next week you've got to do a um, topless photo shoot yeah. for some reason. Would you cut? Would, I would you out? do a cut right now? Oh, I could. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You do a cut, yeah. even though your abs are out. You, know, oh, yeah, you just yeah, go yeah, because on the camera, the leaner I look, the bigger I look on the camera. Mm. But during that time, people also go to, oh, what happened here? You get smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you get smaller yeah, yeah. at your top. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's you cannot 
compare yourself to these others. You can only compare yourself to you yesterday. Mm. Yeah, 100%. Or if you want to get on, yeah, back to more of those tips. So, yeah. you know, obviously not comparing yourself to other people, social 100%. support, enlisting someone, yeah. um, and then performance related goals. Mm -hmm. Is there any others that, you know, that we use or you find that work? Diet. Well? Yeah. Diet, yeah, like th that is the number one. The first time, like, I was speaking to someone just the other day, and they're like, "Oh, you know, I'm not feeling motivated." Like, how's your diet? Like, yeah, that's the first point. Mm. We all know that aesthetically, which is what motivates the majority of people now. If your diet isn't on point and your training is, then you might look terrible. But if your diet's on point and your training's off, you might look great. Mm. Yeah. You know, so your diet is the what changes your aesthetics the most amount, right? Dropping body fat percentage. Like you could even eat a high inflammatory diet, retain water, get water retention, look flatter, all this kind of stuff. So number one is diet. Plus you've got to remember, if you're not in an anabolic state, you'd be a catabolic state. You know, like if you're not in a state of healing and regeneration, there's no point in training because training is damage for your body, mm. right? So if you're damaging it and not repairing efficiently by sleep, by good nutrition, then you're just damaging an already damaged, struggling body. So diet is the number one, like alkaline in the diet to a certain extent, and getting good nutrition in so your body can recover. But also, if you've got to be in a caloric deficit to lose weight, if, you, if you're not in a deficit, you're not going to lose weight. Train all you want, right? So diet, number yeah. one. Yeah. There's, so. there's a couple of points. Like one, I want to confirm on that, like just go over that a little bit more, but also like sleep is a yeah. massive one, and organization. So those are the yeah. three I want to bring up. But yeah. if like staying on diet while we're on it is like, even if you're in a deficit, for example, like, and I'll, I'll just use, I won't, I won't name names or anything, but like a, a client that was in here the other day, and they said, I am struggling to come. Like, I'm dragging myself here because I know it, I, it's worth it, like, but I just don't want to be here. I've got no energy. And then again, we took it back to diet. I went, what are you eating? That was the first question I had. And they're in a deficit because they're trying to lose weight. And I'm like, yeah, it's natural to obviously like maybe have a little bit less energy, but you shouldn't be lethargic at, like unless you've been chronically in a big yeah. deficit, you know? Like, and then obviously that's a problem. So yeah. um, I was like, we, we sort of went through over it. And basically, long story short, we went, okay, she, she'd been in a quite a big deficit for quite a long time. Like, and like yeah. a, a, an excessive deficit. So yeah. uh, BMI and everything's just going down, down, yeah. down. Like her body's burning so slowly. It's struggling just to make ends meet, sort of thing. So I was like, just bring it up a bit. Like, and we made a couple of adjustments. Complete different Fair attitude. Enough. Like, energy is there. Yeah. Even though you're still being in a deficit, energy is back enough that now it's. Keep going. I'll see if it starts again. Excellent. It just times out. I've got to turn the timer out. Carry on. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like, energy is back enough that, you know, now they're back here, like, regularly. And, um, yeah. And that, so I think that's massive, like just because it's the quality of food as well, you know, like it's it's not just the quantity, and that's where I think a lot of people go wrong. It's yeah, they they're like looking, I guess if we're talking like absolute, they're just going lots or less, yeah. like that's all they're looking at. Which yes, foundationally, like that's in inverse out, you know, like we all know that, like you're either going to put on or lose or maintain based on the overall in and out, just absolute how much you're doing. But that's there's so many other factors in terms of like what's going on in the body, healing state versus not healing state, like energy versus no energy, like, and it's yeah. all coming from the quality of food that you're taking in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 just to, to, for anyone that doesn't realize what a BMR is or anything like that, your basal metabolic rate is the amount of calories that um, it takes to maintain your current body weight, pretty much, so like metabolization, basic body functions. So if you start dropping below that, your body's smart, and it will use hormones to manipulate your BMR. So now you can, it will drop your BMR, so your basal metabolic rate, so, now you can maintain your current body weight at lower caloric input just by slowing systems down. Like if you've got a powerful computer, you know when you phone, you can put it onto power saving mode. Mm. Basically like that. It will drop down, it will use less energy to do the same thing, but things happen slower, it's not quite as efficient. So people drop into this state where they think less food is more body fat burning. It's not. The body's smart. It will down regulate and it'll actually even stall body fat burning to keep the, the basic systems going to keep you alive. So it's a very common mistake mm. that. Oh no, yeah, hundred percent. Like, I, I, sometimes you find people that just end up yeah under eating on that one. Mm -hmm. I I was doing it for ages for the amount of like, especially with like running and things yeah. like that. When I first came to kind of into the fitness industry, I was like, oh yeah, you know, eat less, get in a deficit, get in a deficit, get in a deficit, and it's like, oh, well, it's not actually. You don't mm -hmm. need to hold that low of a body fat percent, especially for women, which we know. Yeah. Um, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down now. <laughs> yeah. But just like 
those unrealistic goals, like, yeah, and staying in a deficit for too long. And, I, like, again, I had a client the other day, and it was like, oh, like, you know, protein is, you know, I know how good protein is, protein is. And it was like trying to eat, like, 60% protein in their diet. And I was like, you've got no energy, no carbs, no, like, yeah. how can you train him so much? And that's where, like, the education side yeah, of absolutely. the thing comes in. And, like, it's kind of almost like all or nothing. People kind of hear little glimpses of, yeah. oh, yeah, protein's good, or this is good. Yeah. And they go to one extreme. Yeah. And it's just like, most often than not, we always say it's like that balanced diet, eating quality foods, like mm, that come from the earth, basically, yeah. <laughs> is, yeah. is what we find that, you know, generally, yeah. you know, quality is best. And that's something I had to focus on was because I obviously have a hot, like, you know, high BMR and I can burn a lot of calories. Like I can get away with eating some junk food and it's like, but that's still not quality food that I'm yeah. eating in. Your you know what I mean? Yeah, my ice coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the ice coffee's the same. <laughs> <laughs> the ice coffee's the same. But, um, yeah, like, you know. I that must be such away. a mind game for other people. Like, yeah, Robbie cool. walking out with an iced coffee with whipped cream on the top of the shop. They're like, come on! <laughs> on that, like, oh, I'm sorry to go away from no, here, but the iced coffees, I went up and, oh, he's like, yeah, I, I didn't even know what it was. Like, I thought it was literally ice and coffee. And I went up and ordered it. And he come out and oh, I think he uh, got it wrong the first time I ordered it for you. Because I've gone, oh, no, 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 like, iced coffee, they're like, that's an iced coffee. I was like, with the cream and ice cream. Yeah, with the cream and the ice cream. And they're like, yeah, I was like, oh, and I brought it back down. I was like, is this what you wanted? He's like, yeah, I was like, oh. There you go. Yeah. Like, oh, so like, that is perfect. And then, and then like, but it's like, and it's like when I usually I have like that. It's caffeine and, and the sugar, and then straight afterwards I go and train. Yeah, awesome. that's right. Timing. Like, yeah, that's a good one timing. to come back to. Oh, yeah. We might as well stay on it while yeah. we're there. Yeah, absolutely. Timing. So timing's another absolutely. one. Absolutely. Another tip, like timing of food, timing of training, like timing of everything. But if we go like while we're on nutrition and training, the timing of what you take in. So you know if. We could go so far into it, yeah. but let's just try to keep it pretty simple. Yeah. Like getting a good bit of food in, but ter in terms of energy foods, you know, so yeah. things that are carbohydrates. I obviously want to say carbs. I'm not t saying iced coffee. Uh, I'm not saying like <laughs> you know like. Going but even that's got a place, right? It does. It does. Like, I'm saying that's what we'll go over. But Hussein like, Bolt, right? Hussein Bolt's about to sprint and he's fast release energy. It's not that healthy for him, but he's got it some will fast release energy. energy. Absolutely. But imagine you're just coming out of a fast and you you, you just yeah. Oh, I'm getting tired, so, or, or I just want to eat something before I go into this conference that I'm going to speak in. Yeah. You do that, you sit down, you start going, oh, and now you're up on stage, you're going, I can't even remember what I'm on about. Yeah. You know, so even when it comes into real life, like timing, yeah. Yeah. you know, because Usain Bolt gets to do that, burn it off, get a great result, and then sleep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Like timing of, of food, so you, like two hours before a workout, you know, if, it's gonna, if it needs a fair bit of breaking down. If it's something quite easy, like a liquid or something with a bit of sugar that's just going to get burnt up and use energy really quickly, not so f like I mean, even a banana, like that's going to get broken down within yeah. half hour, an hour, yeah. Yeah. you know, at least in some sense and give you some form of energy pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So you could have that half an hour before training and it's not going to be sitting heavy in your stomach. And then if we're talking like the times of trainings, you know, like morning versus night or midday, like they're all going to have their benefits. On what you could do and obviously this is where education is probably the yeah. overall tip like oh uh, you know education on something find someone if you don't know enough about it find someone who does yeah like ask somebody because that's where the yeah. someone that's qualified and knows what they're talking yeah, about yeah not, not, just, not, the, yeah. not google yeah not google doctor, you will find never dog to google whatever you want to find you will find yeah like, yeah that if you look if you actually like, had kids go. right what's this on here yeah. like they've got a mark yeah, you go yeah. on there it's black death yeah, like yeah. you know you can't yeah, do it cancer and you're like what the hell yeah they're yeah. coming down there he just scratched himself yeah, you know yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's it, that's it like you they obviously they call it like bias but you know, if you, whatever you want to find, you'll find these days if you look it up. So that's where you need someone to filter out all the crap and be like, no, no, this is, this is what's based on, you know, has been studied, has been yeah. proven. This has come from credible sources that are high up in the industry. Like, this is what you should be doing. Yeah. And obviously, even then, there's still things that can be critiqued and not, I'm saying yeah. that's the gold standard. But you at least know it's coming from a, a, a peer reviewed source or like, like, or some form yeah. of educated source yeah. like yeah. absolutely you know I mean? absolutely like, and that's changing all the time too right absolutely. you know like so you've got to keep up with it and and then i guess um going into bringing it back to those topics i said before sleep, sleep yeah. so sleep yeah. is huge yeah, it's, massive. it's massive it's one of the, if you coming very yeah, i know <laughs> two dads are getting no i'm just like yeah you're right isn't you? <laughs> for other people yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely like, it's it's a massive thing like there's if 
I have clients that are struggling with energy. Those are the first two things. Food, like what you said before, mm. and sleep. They're the first yeah. two things. And I go, okay, we need to get better sleep quality. How can we adjust yeah. for that? Like, if someone goes, oh, I only slept a couple of hours last night, like, why? And it, it, then they mm. answer that, why? But why? And usually, like, it, it takes four or five different, I mean, dip, yeah. delving into different yeah. things. But then you start to find out, like, they don't have an actual routine. You know, they sleep this time one night, mm -hmm. sleep this time another night. So it's always changing. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, like, that's where having a routine, that's another yeah, one. Um, 100%. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. keep finding yeah. more, but yeah, having a routine. Like, so for me, I know, like, when I was at um, uni, my teacher said to me, one of the lecturers, that regardless of what time you go to bed, get up at the same time. Mm -hmm. And he's like, mm -hmm. he's like, because, like, that will dictate your, like, circadian so rhythm and, and, yeah. and things like that. So, which is, like, obviously the, the rhythm of your body in terms of um, sleep cycles and everything. And, the, and then he was talking about like, going to sleep if you can at the same time. But obviously for athletes and stuff who play sport at, at night times and stuff, it's not always mm. that simple to just go to bed at that same time every night. Or a screaming baby at two, or three, a four. Baby, yeah, yeah absolutely. There's, you know, there's yeah. a lot of different factors that come into it. So you want to go through and um, and actually adjust for that. Like, but you want to try and keep as much under control as you can. So whatever you have control over that's what you should be trying to keep, like a, a routine too. Because the more of a routine you're in, the more successful you're gonna be. Mm -hmm. right? It just becomes habit, it becomes natural. And then when you stray from your, your routine, usually you don't feel right and you'll usually come back to it. Like, but it has to be established first. Yeah. And that's where, like sleep, I mean, we, food. We were on one camera there. One camera. Batteries are dying, but it is meant for long time vlogs. Right, okay, How we got, let's, let's go. How long we got, half an hour? Boom. <laughs> Intermission. Right, hey, um, so we're on this last one. The audio is all good. I'll just pull this back and get all of us in it. And but we'll have to wrap it up pretty soon. Right. Well, I'll just wrap up sleep quickly and then we can go on to any others that you think. But basically, like, sleep will, like, lack of sleep is going to lead to so many different factors. One being stress. Like, you know, stress increases if you're, you're getting to sleep. Um, cravings go up straight yeah. away. Yeah, it's a big Energy one. goes down. So, yeah. like, it, you, like, the sleep is massive. Like, it's just, you get no sleep, it's a, uh, just asking for something to go wrong. Like, yeah. injury risk goes dramatically through the roof if you get in less than six hours sleep. Yeah. Like, massively through the roof. Like, so, and then you get an injury, you gotta think long term, then you're out for X amount of time, which is gonna throw everything else out. So, yeah. like, that hydration. Cortisol levels. Yeah. yeah. So, like, yeah. hydration's another one. Like, there's just so many that we yeah. can go through. Um, but exactly. long story short, find a compelling reason to train, mm -hmm. find a, a uh, um, peer group that will hold you accountable and not pull you away from it. And a, 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 a source to get educated. A yeah. source to get educated. Like, if you do those three, you're yeah. going gonna to be, like those three, if you keep it super simple, like, will set you up pretty well to at least be able to continue learning and yeah. get the rest. And focus on your diet and your sleep first, because without that, yeah. it's pretty and pointless anyway. Set some goals. Set some goals. Yeah, training is not the be all end all. No. Like, definitely, definitely. Set goals, training. Ah, uh, training. Set goals, sleep, nutrition. Yeah. And then education. Nice. There we go. Right. Okay. So, first podcast. Camera's shutting off left, right, and center. We'll have to consider the timer next time. Be yeah. done by 20 minutes. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I've turned all the auto turn off on these as well, so I don't know what's going on, but anyway, I'll have to look into that. Cool. So, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome to Meow Meow Chats. <laughs> I'm here at Meow Meow Chats with Meow Kelly. <laughs>